Welcome to the introductory lecture in elementary fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics is the study of the relationships between the forces acting on a fluid and the fluid behavior. We can think about a subset of this as fluid statics. Statics focuses on the forces exerted by the fluid when it's at rest. Contrast, fluid dynamics focuses on the forces exerted by a fluid when it's in motion. So what is a fluid? Well, the molecular definition is a fluid is a substance that doesn't have the lattice structure of a solid, so the molecules can readily move. A more practical mechanical definition is that a substance cannot support a shear stress without continuous deformation is a fluid. That is, if you push on a fluid, it will deform. When you push on a solid, it moves, and it can only deform once it reaches its elastic limit. Now, let's think about a liquid versus a gas. These are our two types of fluid. A gas fills the available space in a container. In contrast, a liquid fills a portion of the container based on its total mass and its density. We have two ways of categorizing the basic properties of fluids. First, we want to think about extensive properties. These change with the amount of matter. That is, if you add more mass to a given amount of mass, you will have more mass. So the property mass changes with the amount of matter that you have. Likewise, the weight. When you add more mass, you have more weight. The volume will change when you add more mass. Kinetic energy, potential energy, all these tend to be extensive properties. Now, intensive properties are independent of the amount of matter. So, for example, think about temperature, viscosity, specific weight, elasticity, and density. I know density is simply the mass divided by the volume. Or another way to think of it is it's the ratio of two different extensive properties, and it becomes an intensive property through that. So many extensive properties can be made intensive by dividing by the mass or sometimes by the volume. Units are critical to working in fluid mechanics. We're going to use exclusively the SI system where mass in kilograms, length in meters, and time in seconds are the fundamental units of the system. All other units are derived. So force is newtons, that is mass times acceleration, so that's our weight, will be in newtons. Pressure is in pascals, that is a force divided by an area. Energy or work is in joules, that's a force times a distance. Power is in watts which is energy divided by time. Now you still need to be familiar with the US system, sometimes called the British Gravitational System. In this system, force is in pounds, length is in feet, and time in seconds, those are the three principal units. Other units are derived, so mass in slugs is a derived unit. It's the weight divided by gravitational acceleration. Pressure is in, typically in PSI, pounds per inch squared, force per area. Sometimes you'll see pounds per foot squared. That's more unusual. Energy is in foot-pounds. Power is in horsepower. Now, that's energy divided by time multiplied by a constant to give you a conversion to horsepower. Critical point in fluid mechanics is dimensional consistency. What's 3 seconds plus 4 meters? Well, it's nonsense. You can't add seconds and meters. So well, you just can't add apples and oranges. You can add fruit units if you have some way of converting apples and oranges to some standard fruit unit. Now, dimensional consisti consistency is required for every equation in fluid mechanics. You always want to check your equations to make sure the units are consistent especially on tests. This is the first thing 
that I will look for to see where you went wrong in a problem. Now, keep one thing in mind. Later on, your junior year, we'll cover in hydraulics some empirical equations. They seem to violate the idea of dimensional consistency. You have to look closely at some of the conversion constants, which have some funny units. Now, word of warning. In some textbooks, you'll see a pound mass. I'm not going to use this. I think it was a horrible thing hoisted on 20th, us in the 20th century, the pound mass. Now, what we think of as pound is actually a pound force. So they di distinguish that from a pound mass in the following way. We know that F equals ma, and weight is equal to mass times gravity. That's our standard approach to relating those. But if you're going to use a pound mass, then what you have is that the weight is mass times gravity divided by 32.2 pound mass meters second squared per pound foot. Now, some people think this is convenient because it allows you to say that the weight in pound force is equal to the mass in pound mass, or W equals M, since the G over 32.2 cancels out. But we all have W equals MG drilled into us and F equals MA, so what happens with the pound mass is we often see an extra G creeping into equations. So my opinion, run away! Stay away from pound mass. Uh, if you're dealing with a textbook that covers that, I would get a new textbook. And that's it for this lecture. And we'll cover in the next one the introduction to the ideal gas law.